What's up and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through what went into the making of a drum and bass track on the MPC-1. People often associate the MPC-1 with genres like hip hop and house, but it's also fantastic for more electronic focused genres like some synthwave influenced drum and bass. So I'm gonna show you how I made the passages of music that you heard in the intro. So without any further introduction, let's jump into it. All right, let's start off with the drums, which in this case are super simple. So we've got this kick, very punchy. I don't think I really have much processing on this. In fact, I have no processing on it other than the fact that I'm sending it to the ducker. A snare, same deal. Also sending this one to the ducker, kind of a modern dubstep style snare. A hi-hat, just a little 808 hi-hat, buried in the mix a good bit. I like hi-hats to not be too loud. And then a little open hi-hat that I sampled from my model cycles with just a little bit of EQ, just to clean it up a little bit. For drum and bass with a little bit of a different flavor to it, I probably would have added more percussion and more hi-hats bouncing around in your ears and panned around and such, but I wanted to keep it simple for this one because the drums aren't quite the focus. They just need to punch. Up next, the bass. So, Everything in the song is sample based, and I've used some of the built-in tools to kind of turn these samples into synth patches, sort of. So, this is the full sample, and in fact, there are two samples layered on top of each other. So let me go into here, turn this all the way down so you can hear uh, one of the samples. This is from my sample pack. And it drones on for quite a while, and then layered with that is this other bass. Little bass pluck. Cuts off abruptly, that's not gonna matter. Cause I just need it to be the short little stabby bass. So that's kind of adding this kind of analog flavor to it. And that's providing the girth. And I've got an amp envelope set. So that it rings out just a little bit and if I play it like this, staccato, it's this short little stabby bass. I've also got a high cut filter envelope to turn it into even more of a pluck. So the cutoff is a 21, let me raise that. That's a cool sound, but I really wanted to keep it short and punchy and plucky. Finally, you can hear that glide going on in here. I've got a portamento setting of 25 to get that little glide in there. And that really brought it to life in my opinion. And I'm really glad that Akai finally added that to the MPC standalone line, because that comes in clutch for bringing these sounds to life. And you're gonna see that again. In terms of processing, it's fairly minimal. I've got an EQ to clean some stuff up. And the ducker on here, ducking it to the kick and the snare. Up next, the lead. Longtime viewers of the channel will probably recognize this melody from a previous video. I'm basically stealing my own idea to recreate it a little bit more polished on this because I originally created it on uh, the original Innovation Circuit. Regardless, here's the lead. So this is also sample based. So let me go to my samples. I've got a few layered on here. So let me turn all of these down. I've got this little melodic part. Undo that. Turn down all of these. This high part, that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Turn down all these. That probably doesn't even need to be there, to be honest, but it is. And an octave down version. That one actually goes a long way to making this feel a lot more full than it otherwise would have. So I've not really done much to the samples themselves, just adjusted their volumes relative to each other and made sure they're all tuned the same. And then I've got my envelopes super simple. I just want this to ring out for a while, so I got a nice long release on here. Filter is kind of fun though. I've got a little sweep in with the high cut filter, so a little bit of a wub going on, and then just a long uh, tail again. Once again, just subtly shaping the sound. Little bit of resonance. And the LFO. 
and this is where it's getting that warble. So this same filter is getting modulated up and down by the sine wave LFO. It's not even really synced to the tempo. I just wanted some of that filter movement warbling up and down at some sort of chaotic but correct feeling rate, and I just landed on that. The LFO is also sent to the pan a little bit, so it's bouncing back and forth in your ears just a tiny bit. That adds a lot to the shimmer of this patch. And I've got some effects on here too, so let me turn those off. So I've got a chorus, a spring reverb, and a ping-ponging delay. So let me turn those off. Chorus. Well, here's without, first of all. Subtle chorus. Reverb. And the delay. All of these are fairly subtle, but I think they really make this sound floaty and shimmery and really let it float right on top of the mix. And in this case, I elected to not sidechain it to the kick and the snare. So those three elements are really doing most of the heavy lifting. To fill the track out more, I've got a couple more elements. First of all, this pad. This was made using chord mode. If I go into shift uh, notes here, I can select chords, which I did in this case. Fairly simple chords. This patch sounds a little bit cheesy by itself, but buried in the mix, I think it works. So, program edit. Once again, sample based. I don't know why I put it on layer four, that's kind of odd. But this is just a nice shimmery pad sample available in my $5 sample pack. Nothing too crazy with envelopes, just a little bit of release. This one is not a complicated sound, to be honest. I think the effects are doing most of the heavy lifting. Once again, scooping out some low end, adding some reverb and some shimmer, some chorus, all that kind of fun stuff. So here's without, add the chorus, a little bit of width there, reverb, EQ to clean it up, really cleaned it up, and then the ducker. So that's pretty nice. And then finally, this arp. As you can hear, that's also ducked to the kick and snare, so let me turn those off. So if you go into notes and have a chord selected and hold down note repeat, that's how you activate the arpeggiator. So that's where that sound comes from, which is fun. Once again, this is a sample. Uh, it's a couple of samples layered on top of each other, actually. And the fun thing going on here is that it's the same sample at two different octaves and they're panned a bit from each other. Hopefully you can see this here. One is panned slightly to the left, the other is panned slightly to the right, which is where that width is coming from. Once again, there are two different octaves, so that difference is what creates that width. It's almost a little disorienting to listen to, which is kind of the idea. And this gets pushed into the background a bit so that it's just adding more shimmer to this track. All the shimmer I can possibly give it. And once again, I'm messing with the amp envelope. So I'm cutting the attack just a little bit and then making sure the sound stays nice and short and stabby. Same deal with the high cut filter. It's like a pluck with aspirations. This just tames it a little bit. It's not doing a whole lot, to be honest. LFO, nothing going on here. And then uh, let me show you the effects. The other thing giving it even more chaotic panning is the auto pan. So here's dry. Auto pan. Reverb. Ensemble on top of all of that, which is kind of like a chorus. And then the ducker. See, that's a bit much. Maybe that'd be better for so like a hyper pop type track, but uh, I like that the ensemble is taking the auto panned thing and the reverb thing and making it feel a little more unified. It's probably causing some nasty phase issues, but it sounds good to my ears, and so I'm keeping it. Let me go to track meets.
also, here's a little detail. Uh, you hear how the side chain seemed to hiccup a little bit a few times. I'm still not quite sure why that is. I've had some weird luck with the Ducker plugin, especially in this song specifically. So if you know any way to get it to behave a little more cleanly, let me know in a comment down below. In this case, I would probably export the individual tracks with no sidechain and then just sidechain it in my DAW or rather do some sort of volume automation because that just gives me a lot more control. I don't always like these reactive sidechain or ducking plugins because sometimes they can be a little bit hard to tame or control. And you're going to definitely hear that in this second sequence. <laughs> You can hear how it kind of started choking or mistiming a little bit, which is just really weird. I've messed with the settings a ton and still haven't figured out a good way to get around it. But regardless, I've got a slightly different drum part, nothing too crazy there, just doing a halftime little pattern, and the ARP is the exact same as the previous sequence. The big different thing is the bass, and it's actually got the same starting point. So let me select that. going to program edit to see what's going on here. Without the effects, it's basically the same bass that I showed you before. And I think I've gone in and messed with the filter a little bit, but other than that, it's pretty damn similar. The only thing I've added is another instance of that low droning bass, an octave up. Since this bass is going to be pretty exposed, I needed it to feel a bit more full and take up a bit more space in the frequency spectrum, get those upper frequencies with that octave up, and with that distortion. So there are a couple of distortions in here. The one doing the most work is the diode clip, so let me show you that first. Off. On. And I can show you my settings here. And I've got another distortion feeding into it. Off, on. The funny thing is by itself, it doesn't seem to be doing much. So here's no distortion. Here's distortion amp. It's giving it a bit of grit. But it's not crazy dramatic. But these together are definitely doing a lot. And that's how I got this big distorted bass. And in general, how I took a bunch of one-shot samples and turned them into synths for a fairly organic, punchy, modern, uh, shock one slash metric style drum and bass. If you'd like to see some more music production and track walkthroughs on the MPC-1, I've got you covered. You can click or tap over here somewhere, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.